open space, the final frontier. These are the explorations of scientists, sociologists, and AI technologists at Maynooth University. Our mission, to create autonomous drones, air traffic flight management, and seek out new solutions for our civilization. To boldly go where no drone has gone before. Experience knowledge set free at maynoothuniversity.ie. Maynooth University. No, no bounds. Welcome into Tuesday's Sports Memo NHL betting podcast with our NHL expert, Andrew McGinnis. McGinnis, welcome to the pod. How are you? Doing great. It's great to be here, Drew. And uh, man, it feels like it was just yesterday we were talking hockey and going over a Tuesday slate. So uh, time flies and uh, the season's in full swing now. And a uh, lot of great reads here tonight. A lot of, lot of great games to go over here. So I'm looking forward to breaking down this Tuesday card. I uh, hope you're doing well as well. Yeah, man, doing good. Good Tuesday here, and uh, yeah, we've had we've had a pretty good run here with the uh, podcast best bets in the NHL. I'm learning how to uh, bet NHL just listening to you and betting these best bets. Three and one. We'll have one here at the end of the podcast as well. Um, what last Tuesday you cashed with uh, Maple Leafs in regulation plus one twenty. I bet it live. Uh, thanks for that, McGinnis. How did that game uh, end up? end up finishing i i didn't watch it but i know we did get the plus 120 and it, it was extra value do you mind explaining that real quick to to the listeners that might not be as uh i guess in tune with the nhl betting markets yeah it was a great game like i mentioned it was kind of a road spot for the vegas golden knights heading to toronto and uh the Leafs were kind of struggling to score so uh it was a good spot for them to kind of make a good name for themselves against the vegas golden knights and regarding that regulation line it's one of those things where it's you know it's a win in the 60 minutes so it does not include overtime or the shootout and it really does add a lot of value i mean you can go from i believe you know minus 135 minus 120 and all of a sudden you're getting plus money value if you take that bet for them to win within the 60 minutes not including overtime so i love to do that quite a bit uh, on these all-star teams like the maple leafs like the penguins and like the capitals teams like that and it really worked out that time it was a great spot uh three and one and looking forward to cashing one more here and we'll have that at the end of this podcast yeah for sure excited for that and uh mcginnis has two client plays up at sportsmemo.com uh it's a two-pack for 25 bucks and we do have a special here for this podcast it's a coupon code nhl10 if you type that in with no spaces, just NHL10, you can get that package for just $10. So that's 5 bucks a play. It's a NHL 2-pack on the front page of sportsmemo.com, and the coupon code is NHL10. McGinnis is hitting 59% in the NHL year-to-date. we got a couple games to go over. Best bet at the end. Let's start off uh, game numbers 3 and 4 on Tuesday night's NHL betting card, Tuesday, November 13th. we got Pitt and New Jersey, game number 3-4 here. Pitt traveling to New Jersey. The road team, the Penguins, laying pretty much minus 120 across the board with a total of six, McGinnis. Yeah, this this one's really interesting here, Drew, because you've got two teams here that, in my opinion, are both struggling, but they're two teams that by the end of the season are going to be at opposite ends of the standings, and so this is a great spot here. It's a revenge spot uh, for Pittsburgh because, uh, as we know, uh, November 5th, just a couple days ago, Pittsburgh was actually dominated uh, by the New Jersey Devils. They were, you know, uh, plus 150 underdogs, and the Devils got the job done. So I think this is a great underdog spot here for the Penguins. But, you know, let, let's take a little comparison here between these two teams and, and just take a look at some of these lineups before we give out a play. And, you know, just talk about the depth that we have. Because if you look at last year, we saw Taylor Hall uh, win the Hart Trophy. He was a guy that absolutely crushed it. He killed it. Uh, he led this team through... Uh, at the you know by a huge huge landslide and then next to him was Nico Heischer uh, as far as goals and points goes for the New Jersey Devils but there was nobody really near those two guys they're just those two guys that carry the team we have Kyle Palmieri as well and, and, and Travis Zajac but other than that there's not too many weapons on this team but when you look at this Pittsburgh Penguins team I'll talk about it time and time again the depth is what makes them so great and anyone can say, of course, they've got guys like Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin. But what makes great players great is that they decide to, you know, accept the fact that they have other all-stars around them. And they, they're so perfect at sharing that spotlight and working together, building that chemistry. And you've got guys like Crosby, Malkin, Hornquist, Gensel, uh, Kessel, all sharing that spotlight, all on the same team. Even a guy like Carl Hagelin uh, can get the job done and light the lamp for this team. So... To me, coming into this matchup, I believe 
because one of the longest losing stretches we've seen from Pittsburgh in a long, long time. Uh, before that victory they got November 10th versus Arizona, they were on a five-game losing streak, and that was flat-out embarrassing. Uh, they were having trouble scoring goals. They did not look good. During that span, uh, they put up you know, a, a zero. You know, they put up a donut against the Toronto Maple Leafs. They lost 5 nothing to them. And, of course, like I mentioned, they lost 5-1 to the Devils. So this is a perfect spot here for Pittsburgh to bounce back. They're 4-1 and one in their last uh, five games straight up on the road against New Jersey. Uh, and we're being offered an, a tremendous price here. We're getting great value here. Uh, I mean, Pittsburgh only around minus 115, 120 against this New Jersey team. And I believe that number will drop even more because Casey DeSmith uh, has been announced to be the starter between the pipes uh, for the Pittsburgh Penguins uh, as the goaltender tonight. And I think that this will be a great, perfect revenge spot, division spot for the Pittsburgh Penguins to come out put on a great performance uh, as the favorite. And believe me, when you're the Pittsburgh Penguins and you're a team that you know goes through that five-game losing streak and does not really look like they're looking to be that team that's going to be elite moving forwards, they're a team, Drew, and I'll talk about this as the year goes on with you. They're a team that, I hate to say it, but they, they put their foot on the gas pedal when they want to and they take it off when they want to. And it's, it's one of those teams that they're almost like the Golden State Warriors of the NHL. I mean, they're just so dominant that they always find a way to make a, make a difference in the, in the playoffs and, and make a huge impact down the stretch. But sometimes they can just go through a little lull, uh, and that's what happened there for the Penguins. So coming into this one, I think this one's going to be a purely dominant game for the Penguins. I love it. Minus 115, Pittsburgh Penguins on the money line. All right, like in the uh, Pittsburgh side there. McGinnis, I have a question for you. So if you're talking about a football game that's kicking off at 7 o'clock Eastern time, you'd be like, okay, kickoffs at 7 o'clock. How do you say that for the NHL? Puck drops. The puck drops at this time. That's puck. usually what you say, the puck drops, yeah. Okay, what well, you wouldn't say like oh, the face-off at, at 7 Eastern. Uh, you could say these two two teams are facing off, but typically you say you know puck drops at 7 Eastern time, and then you say the arena – it's, you know, kickoff and puck drop. That's kind of the two comparison, I'd say. Is there, like, a slang out there? Like, a real NHL fan would say, you know, some slang thing that sounds real cool or no? Uh, that's pretty much what they use. Uh, just the puck drops, I guess. Uh, maybe maybe different for, per team, but that's pretty much all I can really give you, Drew. I wish I could tell you something more fancy, but that's uh, <laughs> the, the puck drops. That's all, all I can really give you. All right. No, it's kind no of like in, in, in basketball, tip off kind of thing. Okay, all right, that works. So we got a 7 o'clock Eastern puck drop here between Vancouver <laughs> and the New York Islanders. Looks like six the total. Heavy favorite here, the New York Islanders at home, seeing pretty much minus 170, minus 175 across the board. Yeah, for me, Drew, this is one that I'm going to stay uh, far, far away from the uh, the side here, and I'll just, I'll just make the easy choice here and look at the over. I mean, uh, Vancouver's offense has been on fire. They're a team at the top of their division, shocking a lot of people. And still, uh, you know, nothing's faded away with them. They've shown consistency. Uh, they've had a roughly around 29 shots per game, and a lot of those are quality shots. And it's not just Elias Pettersson. It's not just Bo Horvat. It's the whole supporting cast getting the job done. And that's always been my biggest issue with the Canucks, is can they have that supporting cast step up and make a difference on a nightly basis? And that's currently what we're seeing from this team. So I actually love that. I love what we're seeing from them. Uh, they're making a huge difference, and they're putting out goals, uh, plain and simple. And, and so is this New York Islanders team. Uh, they got a coach in Barry Trotz that is trying to make a difference defensively and trying to slow things down. But to me, uh, these two teams are going to clash, and it's going to be an absolute messy, messy game, Drew. Uh, this Islanders team can flat-out score. Uh, I mean, their past three games, uh, they've had a little bit rough, rough of a go, but the talent that they have down their roster – the total has gone over in four of Vancouver's last six games on the road uh, against the Islanders. Uh, the total has gone over in four of Vancouver's last five games in general against the Islanders. And these two teams, they scream the over. I mean, the last three games head-to-head, New York Islanders have averaged four goals against this Canucks team. Uh, I think the goaltending is a little bit weak on both on both uh, sides of the game. And uh, to be honest with you, the starting goaltenders are almost the biggest worry for me in this one. Uh, I don't trust either of them, Drew. It's flat out, plain and simple. I don't trust either of them. I still don't think Jick, uh, Mark, Markstrom is a strong, contending goaltender. I think they'll have to figure that out uh, in Vancouver. And Thomas Bryce has been confirmed uh, for the Islanders, and he's a guy who last year was standing on his head 
And all of a sudden this year, uh, he's having trouble finding any kind of consistency whatsoever. So the total was posted at six. And to be honest with you, I was surprised it wouldn't be just more heavily juiced. So we'll happily, happily take the over six in this one. This one could get up to, you know, seven, eight, nine goals in this game. So that's going to be kind of my circled game here on this podcast to go over the total. All right, so liking a lot of goals in New York. Uh, next game up, we got, what, Tampa Bay, Buffalo. And off the top of my head, McGinnis, I wanted to ask you a question. Tampa Bay, what, 12-4, and four, 25 points on the year. That's uh, in the standings I'm talking about. I'm seeing only Nashville ahead of them, and they're in the Western Conference, 13-3. and three. And one thing with Nashville that I'm looking at in the record, they're 8-0 and oh away from home. Is that a trend? Obviously, they're not going to, well, maybe they could, I don't know, stay undefeated away from home. But a, a trend you, you kind of use in your handicapping as far as NHL teams winning on the road, and I'm talking about this Nashville team, would you look for them to keep, uh, keep that going? Yeah, Nashville actually just dropped their first game on the road last night against Anaheim, and that was a perfect, that was okay. a great, uh, I'm happy you brought that up, Drew. I'm not uh, trying to correct you by any means, but I'm happy you brought that up because they were rolling, and being being successful on the road in the NHL is just as important as any other sport, if not more important. Uh, it, it, I find teams struggle. I find teams at the start of their road trip specifically uh, can get off to a tough start. And they have to finish road trips uh, strong, especially those long, long road trips that could be grueling. Uh, you can miss home. You can miss your day-to-day routine. And, yeah, I think those two teams are at the top of the league right now. They're both teams that can consistently score, but their goaltending has, has been exceptional as well. Uh, you got to love when you've got the, – the best part about those two teams, when I think about the top of my head, Drew, is they've got guys like Louis Deming as a backup goaltender right now uh, with the goals against the average that he has – uh, right behind uh, Vasilevsky is just outstanding. Then, of course, for Nashville, we've got Pekarine and, and UC Saros. That those are both two goalies that can be starting goaltenders in my eyes on a lot of teams in the NHL. So, first of all, you know that depth at the goaltender position really does help reflect their record, and it also does help reflect their road success as well. So, uh, give a lot of credit to their goaltending, and, and of course, yeah, their success on the road is huge. And those are two teams that we will 100% be talking about. Uh, later on uh, in you know April, May, and June, uh, this coming playoffs. Okay, no, no, thanks for pointing that out, McGinnis. I, I am seeing an asterisk next to this. I got the uh, newspaper doing it kind of the old school fashion way with with hockey in in the podcast. So they, it's funny they they won eight in a row, caught my eye, but they dropped it last night. So thanks for bringing that up. We got uh, game number nine, ten, Tampa Bay, Buffalo here, McGinnis uh, minus one thirty, minus one thirty five. The Lightning laying on the road. And six, the total in Buffalo. Well, you know what? Last week, Drew, I, I brought it up with you, that whole weird situation with the Ottawa Senators about the whole Uber incident and uh, what's going to happen with that team. And I'll tell you, the way they've responded has been its been pretty much outstanding. It, there's no words that I really have for the Ottawa Senators, the way that they performed. And the reason why I'm talking about them is because of their outstanding victory against uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning uh, Saturday night. It's ridiculous. I mean... This is a team that nobody had faith in to be able to have goal production, but nobody had faith in them also to have great defense. And, you know, pretty much both of those two two things have come to life. I mean, this Ottawa Senators team took Tampa Bay to school. I mean, uh, Tampa Bay up 4-2 Saturday night. They're looking good, looking to cover a lot of puck lines for everybody. They're dominant, keeping Ottawa out of their own end. And all of a sudden, Ottawa comes back, scores several, several goals in the third period to come out and win 6-4. Uh, and that is not acceptable for this Tampa Bay team. Uh, they're 5-1 they're and one straight up in their last six games on the road. And I really do think that based off what we saw in Ottawa in their past couple games here, we're getting a decent price. And ever since Louis Domingue has been announced as the goaltender, the starting goaltender, which was announced right before this podcast started for Tampa Bay, the price is dropping like crazy on this Tampa Bay team. They're just minus 130 now. They're minus 145, 150, and 55 before. Uh, this is a game that I want everyone listening to this podcast to get on. This should be uh, an absolute dominant performance. This Tampa Bay team is one of, if not the best teams off a loss in the entire National Hockey League, especially after getting embarrassed with that comeback the Ottawa Senators uh, took to them. And, you know, a really, really important stat that I like to always bring up when it's there. The Lightning are 5-0 and in their last five games after allowing five goals or more in their previous contest. So 
pretty much this team, first of all, they know how to respond, but they also know how to respond after a very terrible defensive performance. So this team isn't just great scoring-wise and, and scoring depth. They also like to take care of things defensively and try and shut the opposition down as well. And because we're getting a backup goalie in Louis Domingue tonight and getting Vasilevsky uh, taking a little bit of a break, we're going to get that much better of a price. And I'm still confident with Deming going out there between the pipes to get the job done for me. So maybe even wait for this price to drop even more. But at the minus 130 number, uh, I'm completely confident with it. This Buffalo team, don't get me wrong, Drew, they can score. I mean, they they, 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 they got a victory against Vancouver on the 10th. And they worked things out. Uh, they had a great game against Montreal on the 8th. But they're a team that's not going to be consistent. Their defensive woes are going to continue. They're involved in far too many high-scoring games. Uh, and they can't take care of the puck in their own end. They're only beating lower tier teams in my eyes. And Tampa Bay is going to come into this one with, you know, an absolute, I think, dominant performance. So go ahead, take Tampa Bay on the money line, minus 130. This one should be an absolute dominant performance from Tampa Bay. Don't be fooled by the backup goaltender being in nets because, like I mentioned, their depth at the goaltending position is what makes them such a great team. And McGinnis, you bring up 5-0 and after uh, giving up five goals. Is that the correct stat? Uh, yes. That in you know my background or what what I really concentrate in is college basketball and college football. So trying to kind of dig into that, I love the stat as well, like you said. But uh, I, I would think that that's a lot to do with with coaching. It, it could also be um, you know the leaders on the team and kind of being uh, I, I guess guys with the right mindset on the roster. Where would you attribute that to to, to the coaching or just overall talent level? Yeah, I know. I would have to agree with you. I think it's definitely both. I mean, I think it's a mental state. It's a mindset. Uh, it's the ability to forget about the last game, but also remember the bad things and take those from that game and move forwards and, and realize what mistakes you made. And so when I see a style like this, it sounds like a pretty confusing, confusing stat, but it, it's plain and simple. 5-0 in their last five, it must mean something. They must know how to respond. And for a team that, you know, you know, allowed six goals versus the Ottawa Senators, that's not acceptable. For a team that it's supposed to be at the top of this Eastern Conference. Uh, for them to allow several goals in the third period and lose their lead, that's not acceptable. It's embarrassing in my eyes, and they're a team that knows how to respond. So I'm not saying they can always respond, and you know the the, the bounce back spot is perfect here for them. But they're five and one in their last six road games. They know how to get the job done after uh, a complete performance like they did against Ottawa. And tonight is a perfect spot here against Hutton and the Buffalo Sabres. All right, McGinnis, we've got one game left, and we'll get to the best bet. Game number 15-16, a late-nighter here um, on the West Coast. we got Toronto traveling to play Los Angeles cross-country uh, cross and uh, having to go over the border here. I don't know if that matters at all, but uh, minus 126, Toronto laying on the road, five and a halves with a little juice towards the over. Drew, anyone that knows me knows that I have been uh... – hating on this LA Kings team throughout the entire year, throughout pretty much the past year and a half. I just think with the way that the NHL has advanced, the way the NHL has moved forwards, they're not able to keep up with the speed and the fast pace that this that this day and age NHL really provides. And it, it's sad to watch. They're a very slow team in my eyes. And we've got a, a Maple Leafs team that has not been performing to their potential. Uh, we've got Austin Matthews out with an injury. We've got William Nylander still holding out through. And this is something that's unheard of in the NHL. You hear about it in football, maybe in basketball a little bit, but you don't hear about this stuff in hockey. William Nylander is still over in Sweden as he's in the contract negotiation, so he has not played a single game uh, for the Maple Leafs so far this year. But that does not matter. The goal production, the line depth, you know, this team has three lines that really can score. It's about... It's about darn time we start seeing the consistency from this team. The fact that we can get uh, a regulation price at, at, at such a good number here uh, for this Maple Leafs team, it, it makes me think twice about it. I mean, the fact is, plus 115, first game on the road, I understand, but it's just it's too good to be true. I love it. This Kings team won't be able to keep up uh, with the Maple Leafs whatsoever. They're too slow, and their goaltending situation is awful. They give up far too many bad rebounds. And the defense aren't ever even in the area to clear the puck out of the way. Uh, this Maple Leafs team was 11 and six, and they should not be 11 and six. And uh, I think the LA Kings are five, 10 and one, and they should they shouldn't even have those five wins in my eyes. So, you know, Toronto averaging 3.4 goals per game, LA barely even averaging two goals per game. It's been an embarrassing, embarrassing effort for them uh, so far this year. And, and I look to see them 
uh, come into LA and just completely, uh, you know, just an onslaught. They're coming off a, a loss against the Boston Bruins, a pretty big rival to them, where they lost 5 1. And I'm not saying, you know, you get embarrassed by a team, you always come back strong. But after that performance versus Boston, I can guarantee you they've been out in LA, they've been getting ready, they've had numerous practices in LA, so the time change shouldn't throw them off whatsoever. They should be prepared. And when you score one goal and you're the final Maple Leafs, you will come back with a great performance. Uh, and I think that, you know, with that regulation price, like I mentioned, uh, when this podcast first started, plus 115 for the Maple Leafs to win it uh, within the 60 minutes uh, is a great look tonight here in the NHL. And guys, remember the coupon code NHL10 when checking out at sportsmemo.com with uh, McGinnis's two-pack up there at the front page. It's normally $25 with the coupon code NHL10. You can get both plays for just $10. That's 5 bucks a play on the front page of sportsmemo.com. McGinnis, it's time. Best bet time for the NHL. Three and one year to date on the podcast. I got my bet online account up. Uh, tell me where to click, man. Where are we going? This is a little more juice than we've laid so far here on, on the season, uh, Drew, but minus 130 with the Tampa Bay Lightning, minus 135, 140. I'll be fine with going to that number. Uh, you got to love it. Tampa Bay Lightning, Louis Domingue between the pipes will get the job done for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Like I mentioned, 5-0 in the last five after giving up at least five goals. This is a team that knows how to respond after getting embarrassed like they did against Ottawa. Buffalo won't know what hit them uh, when this Tampa Bay Lightning team comes to town. Far too much talent. Look to see Nikita Kucherov light the scoreboard up and get the job done here for Buffalo. I can't see Buffalo doing much against this Tampa Bay team because of also how strong their defense is. And from that performance we saw against Ottawa, they're going to want some revenge here. And uh, Buffalo, it will take that revenge. So go for go for Tampa Bay, minus 130, minus 135 here at some spots for the best bet. We're 3-1 in the season. Look to continue, make it a 4 and one spot here. All right, McGinnis, so we got regular NHL, not NHL three-way, right? Regular NHL. Okay, game number nine, Tampa Bay, minus 130. Uh, locked and loaded, baby. Let's go, McGinnis. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, buddy, so go Lightning tonight. Uh, guys, remember the coupon code NHL10 at checkout for his two-pack on the front page of sportsmemo.com. Uh, you can get both both plays for just ten bucks, five bucks uh, each. And uh, McGinnis, anything else you want to throw out before we shut this down? Uh, yeah, just last second here. I mean, it's the CFL playoffs division finals uh, this Sunday coming up here, and I'm going to have a five percent play uh, going on Sports Memo. And up until Friday, you can get that play for just fifteen dollars at Sports Memo. Look it up because before after Friday, it'll go back to its regular price of thirty dollars. And remember, anyone that buys a 5% play gets 150% credit back into your account if that play doesn't cash. But this is a total that I absolutely love in the CFL, and I cannot wait uh, for this coming Sunday. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Best of luck with your bets, and uh, we'll talk tomorrow with uh, Robbie Vino starting the college football Every Game on the Board podcast. Open space, the final frontier. These are the explorations of scientists, sociologists, and AI technologists at Maynooth University. Our mission, to create autonomous drones, air traffic flight management, and seek out new solutions for our civilization. To boldly go where no drone has gone before. Experience knowledge set free at maynoothuniversity.ie. Maynooth University. Know no bounds.